can the CPSC administrator know whether a disability exists? So mostly, the people who do the evaluations never speak to the CPSC administrator. Mostly, the people who do the evaluations just hand their reports in, a summary report is made, and that's handed to the CPSC administrator along with the reports. So in order for the CPSC administrator to know who this child is, you've got to write stuff so that child, that, that administrator can see who this child is and make determinations. What's the child's highest functioning level? Where, does the child, where do the child's skills break down? What does that mean? Is that a mild, a moderate, a severe problem? If, as evaluators, you need to be able to make that quantification. You have to analyze it within the context of the child's prior experiences. That's why the parent interview is so important. So what you want to do is those 10 examples when you get six or five or four, you want to bring them into your evaluation if those are the best examples. Sometimes you get them in front of you and I'll show you examples of that as well. You want to make that child come to life. Who is this child? Because your evaluations keep that child's future opening or closing. So I call them holograms. I like the idea of holograms. So here's a hologram about that two-year, 10-month-old Mexican boy that was in his evaluations, in his uh, speech evaluation, expressive language. Jay primarily communicates through one and two word utterances with a few three word utterances. Okay, that's a nice description. Show me the money. His communications are greatly enhanced by his excellent use of intonation, facial expressions, and gestures to communicate meaning. Okay, show me how. All right, I've read that before. What does that mean? His mother related a story which is an excellent in, uh, illustration of this. So here's the mom bringing one of the highest communication utterances that he uses in a situation to show us how he can communicate. His mother told his father that he really wanted a pair of sneakers to light up. When he came home from seeing his dad, Jay ran to his mother and excitedly pointed to uh, his feet and said, Yo, papi shin! I, daddy, light! Shin is how he can uh, consistently produce loose during the evaluation. He has a speech problem, but not a language problem. I, daddy, light, meaning, Mommy, look! Daddy bought me a pair of the light-up sneakers! Here's another example. It is estimated that Jay has a vocabulary of well over 50 words. Now, I have to say the reason this was in the evaluation is because the evaluator, the psychologist, said the child had no words. So I thought it was important to put in all the words, <laughs> at least the ones that I heard, right? During the evaluation, he used approximately 35 words, including mommy, papi, Jessica, Hugo, no, si, este, oh, oh, aquí, allá, acá, vamos, guagua, miau, quemó, ojo, ten, bicicleta, luz, libro, pelota, escoba, sucio, guarde, aguarde, guantes, coger, zapato, and gracias. So it's very important to make sure that you really bring the data into your evaluations. Here's another example. Jay requested toys by saying, ma, ca, when he wanted the carro, the car. Mommy, give me the carro. When his mom told him he could play with a different toy if he put the other one away, he put the toy away, pointed to it, and looked at his mom and said, ya de, meaning, ya guarde, ya la guarde. I put it away. So here's a boy who's really understanding, comprehension, fantastic and actually using the language that he has to communicate. Here we have past tense of the verb put away. Ya guardé. Eh. Here's another one. Same boy. Jay demonstrated appropriate knowledge of functions. For example, when pre presented with a picture of an iron, he said mo, meaning me quemó. It burned me. When presented with a picture of a bicicleta, of a bicycle, he said Ir ya, meaning to go there. The function of the bicycle is to take you there. The function of an iron, hopefully to iron your clothes. But we get what he was saying with it burned me. So here is the kind of conclusions you might write for this boy. Although generally a late talker with, here's where you bring your clinical judgment, your deep understanding of language disorders and disabilities of preschoolers into your evaluation. 
Although generally a late talker with normal comprehension skills would not be eligible for speech and language services, with such a reduced phonemic repertoire, limited syllabic development, and severe intelligibility problems, this is an appropriate case for speech and language services. Now, just so you know, I have not give, provided you with the speech section, which gives you a lot of data on his phonemic repertoire, his syllabic development, and his intelligibility issues. Some of the examples that I gave you, you can tell. Um, that it, without context, to know that yade means I already put it away, you'd need some more information. So, uh, but that's in the, this part is in the evaluation. So now I'm talking to the CPSE administrator saying, I know normally you wouldn't give services, but here you might. Based on his current language profile, not speech, but language, it's quite possible that as his expressive language expands, he will present primarily with moderately severe phonological delays. Given his use of nonverbal communication and his obviously strong linguistic skills, he may have determined that he will find other ways to communicate rather than doing so with verbal language that people cannot understand, meaning cannot understand his verbal language because of language problems. And I cite the Allsway and Rodriguez and Timler article, which is a great article telling about how to distinguish a late talker from a kid who's typically developing. I did recommend services for this child, but I gave it within a context of saying, here's what I found with this ch child. I would recommend services, but I didn't make him look worse so the child would get services. That's fraud, just so you all know. Don't worry, mom, he's gonna look worse in this evaluation because I wanna make sure he gets services. That's broad. I wouldn't do that. Hopefully, most of you, nobody else would. So now, let's look at the same boy, same day, but now a score-driven evaluation. Let's see what happens to this two-year, 10-month-old Mexican boy. So the psychological evaluation, done the same day in the same place, Results are presented in a descriptive, qualitative manner and should be interpreted with caution because of the absence of appropriate local norms and deviations from standard procedures to accommodate bilingual populations. Okay, so basically saying don't rely on the scores. But let me ask you a question. Why, why, why would an evaluator with a master's, this one actually has a doctorate, with a master's degree or a doctorate in any profession, why would they ask the CPSE administrator to interpret their findings with caution? Strange, inappropriate. That's what you're paid for. You're paid to be able to gather information and interpret it, assess and evaluate. So what this psychologist found, and I'll show you some examples of this boy's intellect, he's a very smart kid. Results of the current assessment indicate that Jay is functioning cognitively within the significantly delayed range in the 24 months developmental level, which is more than two standard deviations below age of, age of expectancy. So essentially, the psychologist said this little boy was functioning at two standard deviations, more than two standard deviations below the mean. So his cognitive level, his IQ, was lower than 98% of the population. Wow, because even just the stuff you've seen already about it that he did in the speech time with those 35 words and ya, ya, ya gorde, I already put it away, and his understanding of the mom, very complex set of instructions, cognitively more, lower than 98% of the population, can't possibly be. Let's see what else. This is what else the psychologist says. He did not speak at all during formal testing. He exhibited expressive and receptive language def deficits. Expressively, he said several words to his mother, most of which were unclear and seemed unintelligible. He relied on pointing and facial expressions to communicate. Receptively, he did not seem to understand questions or instructions, such that frequent repetitions, clarifications, and gestures were necessary. The results of this evaluation appear to be a valid estimate of Jay's current level of functioning. Now remember, he understood when the mother said, he was playing with the toy, the mother said, if you put that toy away, I will give you the other toy. That was one of our holograms. And yet this evaluator says, he doesn't understand? Two year, 10 month old? Psychologist also said it is recommended he attend a highly structured preschool program with a language enriched environment to stimulate and enhance cognition, language, social and motor development. Off he goes to a 4410 preschool. 
Lights are closed on that child's future that day. So let's think about cognition. What else could the psychologist have done to think about cognition? Well, here's an example of looking at cognition of this child. And you tell me if he's in the bottom 98, the not bottom 2% of the population of two-year, 10-month-old boys. When Jay was given some bugs to play with, he was clearly interested in them and wanted to know their names. He held each one up and said, uh? With an intonation communicated, he wanted to know what it was. His mother named each bug. When he discovered the second beetle in the group, he fished out the first beetle and held up both, demonstrating he was engaged actively and intellectually involved in grouping the bugs. There he was. He, what's this? Mommy says, beetle. He puts it away. Spider, whatever. Pulls it. Oh, it's another beetle. He pulls it, brings it together. That's a great showing of cognitive skills. Play skills appeared to be age appropriate. He played functionally and manipulatively with the toys presented to him. When presented with a plastic lifelike bug, he explored it visually and tactically in an engaging and wonderfully curious manner. When he was given a few bugs, he lined them up according to type, sorting, categorizing, comparing, contrasting, and then made them interact by having them jump on each other. <laughs> But here we have a child who has very good cognitive skills. Nobody showed him to make that game. He just created this cognitively engaging game because he's a bright child. When he was given a book, he sat and went through it page by page, tending to all the pictures appropriately. A child who obviously has been exposed to books. So just remember that psychologists said that he was in the bottom 2% cognitively of the population. Whereas if she'd gone beyond what she did, which was a series of tests, uh, you know, she gave him one, two tests, of course. Um, if she'd gone beyond that, she would have seen a very, very bright child. A very bright child, as you can see from the examples, from the holograms. Don't forget the critical questions. They are the most evidence-based diagnostic tool we have.